Let's assume that you stopped sleeping. What would happen to you? And how would it unfold? That's the question we're answering today on Let's Assume. Sleep is part of our everyday lives and our daily routines are defined by it. When we were young, we had bedtimes. When we're responsible for our own schedules and can sleep whenever we want, we can't seem to get enough of it. Some of us prioritize sleep too highly and get too much of it, but that's not what this video is about. What would happen if you completely stopped sleeping altogether? What's the longest that you've ever stayed awake? Let me know in the comments below and tell me about what you felt and experienced. Less than 24 hours. You've decided to skip a night of sleep for the first time. It's a couple of hours past your routine bedtime. It's the dead of night and you're slaving away on a paper that's due next morning. How are you feeling? At first, you're going to feel quite drowsy, but once you get over a hump or catch your second wind, as some people like to say, you won't be feeling too bad at all. There's actually a decent chance that you'll feel a rush of extra energy, motivation, positivity, and maybe even a moment of stronger sex drive. Your paper is coming along quite nicely. This is because your mesolimbic system, the pathways in your brain responsible for the delivery of dopamine, has become stimulated. This feels good. Maybe this no sleep thing isn't such a bad idea. But from here on out, things get a bit more slippery. 24 hours. Now the exhaustion that you're expecting hits, but you can't sleep. You've got to go to class. Unfortunately, you're going to find this school day very difficult. You're going to be feeling drowsy and irritable. You try to concentrate on what's going on at school or at work, but concentration has become extremely difficult. You're having trouble remembering even the most basic of things. Your perceptual and cognitive functions have taken a big hit, and you retain next to nothing from your professor's lectures. Physically, you're less coordinated, your muscles are feeling tense, and your blood sugar levels are rising. The part of your brain responsible for planning and evaluating decisions has begun to fall asleep, and you're feeling impulsive. But guess what? You've got another paper due the next morning, and you haven't even started. Time to chug some Red Bull and pull another all-nighter. 48 hours. It's been two days since you last slept. You managed to churn out a crappy essay that your professor will read with lots of disappointed sighs before finally slapping on a big red F. And all you want to do is go to sleep. But class is starting, and you're not about to ruin your perfect attendance record. Today is even worse than yesterday. Everything that you were feeling before is intensified. But some more troubling symptoms have begun to emerge as well you begin to experience something called microsleep. This is the brain's way of telling you that it desperately needs rest. You're entering brief moments of complete unconsciousness, completely against your will. On top of that, you notice that a cut on your arm from the other day is beginning to show signs of infection. As disappointed as you are at this realization, you have no idea that this is yet another symptom of your sleep deprivation. Your body is no longer metabolizing glucose and your immune system is taking a hit. You can't remember a time you felt worse, both mentally and physically. Relieved, you remember there's no more homework due the next morning. But then you get a call. 72 hours. You'd completely forgotten about the surprise birthday party that was being planned for your roommate. You were a good sport. You let them in, you jumped out and yelled, surprise, when your roommate got back from work. And then you quietly slipped off to the bedroom to try and get some desperately needed sleep. But no sleep would come. The party lasted all through the night, and you spent the whole time plotting on how you're going to murder your roommate for owning such a loudspeaker system. All of the symptoms of your sleep deprivation have become more and more intense. You're extremely fatigued, you can't concentrate for more than a couple of seconds, and your memory is the worst it's ever been. You can't seem to communicate your thoughts to anyone who talks with you, and you're beginning to feel extremely paranoid. Worst of all, you're beginning to see things that aren't there. At first, it's just flickers of movement out of the corner of your eyes. But before too long, dark shapes and menacing shadows leap out at irregular intervals. You feel as if you're going insane. 72 hours plus. Chances are you won't be able to stay up much longer than 72 hours, even if your roommate's obnoxious birthday lasts another night. In studies, people who stayed up longer than 72 hours needed stimulants like caffeine to keep from falling asleep. But hey, let's just suppose that you managed it somehow. All of the symptoms that you experienced in the first 72 hours would continue to get worse and worse. Focus, perception, cognitive function, and emotional stability 
are at the worst they've ever been in your entire life. You're more exhausted than you've ever thought possible, and the hallucinations have become almost unbearable. At the end of it all, you've managed to avoid sleep for 11 entire days, matching the longest scientifically observed case of sleep deprivation. So what happens now? Sleep at last. You've stayed awake for far longer than is healthy. You've delved into the darkest pit of physical well-being and emotional health that you'll ever see. Surely there'll be some lasting consequences, right? One would think, but scientific studies haven't been able to discern any long-lasting effects of even the worst sleep deprivation as long as one resumes a normal pattern of sleep. So at the end of your 11 nightmarish days, you'll snuggle up under a warm blanket in the dark, a quiet room, sleep a long, deep sleep, and wake up feeling relatively normal. It might take a couple of nights worth of restful sleep before you feel as well rested as you'd like. But thankfully, your sleepless misadventure is now nothing more than a memory. When sleeplessness is deadly. There is one worst case scenario that we haven't discussed yet. There is a rare genetic condition called fatal familial insomnia, which causes progressively worsening insomnia and sleeplessness. Patients with this condition experience all of the conditions listed above, but they never get that restful night of sleep at the end of the journey. Eventually, their body becomes so sleep deprived that their organs begin to shut down and they die a slow death. After someone begins to show the symptoms of fatal familial insomnia, the average survival time is 18 months. Clearly, sleep is extremely important to your health. Sleeping is part of our daily routines because our bodies need it daily. Even a single missed day will start you down the path of the symptoms that I laid out in this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that like button. And before you fall asleep, let's just suppose that you subscribe for more content just like this. I'll see you in the next video.